Yom Shishi Tov, which means Good Friday. I'm Stephen Bruck. This is Messianic Moment Ministries, and you are more than welcome to be here. I thank you for being here, in fact. Today is the last day of January 2020, and next week I will be off. It is um, the, our anniversary on February 7th, and we always celebrate it with a cruise. So we'll be gone all next week. Look forward to seeing you back here Um should be around the second week of February. Well, let's get into the Parsha for today. Now, last time we left with God sending the plagues upon Egypt, and this Parsha begins with God continuing to send the plagues against Egypt, and we're up to the plague about locusts, which is followed by the three days of complete darkness. Yet Pharaoh is still unmoved, although he has been asked by his officials to let the people go because, they're, well, they're saying to him, hey, buddy, hey, don't you see? Egypt's being destroyed. Hello? Yeah. <clears throat> and actually, Pharaoh's getting a little ticked off at this point. He tells Moses that the next time he sees Pharaoh's face, he will die. And Moses, well, he says pretty much, hey, yo, hey, yeah, that's fine with me, buddy. The last plague now comes, the worst one of all, the death of the firstborn throughout Egypt. God gives Moses the instructions on how the Israelites are to protect themselves from the destroyer coming at midnight. And also that this is now the first month of their year. Basically he's saying, get ready, you guys are leaving. He instructs them regarding the Passover lamb and the eating of unleavened bread for the whole week after the Seder. Moses also has the people go to their Egyptian neighbors asking for what are essentially spoils of war. And the Egyptians are happy to give all they have, all their valuables, in order to get these people out of their land. Finally, after the firstborn of the royal family is dead, Pharaoh ejects the Israelites from the land. He doesn't just say, okay, I'll let you go. He says, get the heck out of here. And they leave in such haste that they don't even allow their dough to rise. So they have to bake the unrisen dough, which is what we call matzah. Actually, they weren't supposed to have leavening in their dough anyway, you know. And that's where we end the Parsha. In Leviticus 17.10, we're told, the life of a thing is in the blood. And the blood that was brushed onto the lentils and doorposts of the houses of the Israelites was life for them. God tells us many times throughout the Tanakh that it is by the life that is in the blood which provides us atonement for sin. But, you know, blood is a double-edged sword because we need it to stay alive. Bloodborne diseases can kill us. In today's scientific world, we know that harmful germs and bacteria can be spread through the blood, just like comets, leavening, can spread through a batch, of, a batch of dough. So even though God tells us that blood is life, it may also cause death. <laughs> Wait a minute, how can that be? Blood is used to anoint and to sanctify the holy items in the tabernacle, <laughs> which are used to worship God. If there is death in blood, how can it be used to sanctify? Well, this is sort of like the red heifer thing. That's in Numbers 19. Everything associated with creating the water of sanctification from the ashes of the red heifer, which is used to cleanse us, causes the person performing the actions to become unclean. I think this is all part of the universal balance God created when he created the universe. Blood is what transports life, and when we care for our blood by doing what God tells us to do, the blood remains free of death. But when we disobey or reject God's instructions, that which brings life will bring death. For example, let's look at the laws of kashru. The one main difference between kosher animal meat and the rest is that to prepare the meat, the animal is killed in a humane way, which is called the shikita which drains the blood quickly. Then the meat is salted to draw out any of the remaining blood. And once all this is done, the meat is always cooked thoroughly. <laughs> you won't find someone getting a bloody steak at a kosher restaurant. Now this obedience to God's instructions regarding the eating of blood is what keeps our blood free of pathogens. 
On the other hand, rejecting this ordinance will likely result, especially in the olden days, way before the USDA, in, in getting some form of an infection. Look at what is happening today. In China, they've long had to worry about SARS, but now this new virus, this coronavirus, is absolutely deadly. And in Africa, the bushmeat trade is what caused AIDS. And science shows that drinking clean blood can still lead to death. Blood can be life-giving or life-taking, depending upon how you treat it. The same is true with the Torah. Through obedience, we can achieve everlasting life. But rejection of God's instructions will result in death. This is why Moses told the people, and you find this in a couple of places of Deuteronomy, but I'm just going to quote from Deuteronomy 30, 15, 20, that it is up to them to choose life through obedience or to choose death through rejection of the instructions God gave in the Torah. There are many things in your life that will carry one result or another, and it's up to you to choose the right way. Argue with your job, your boss, or keep your job. Argue with your spouse, or sleep in the bed. Drive safely, or have your car in the shop. Do as we are told to do in the Torah, or spend eternity in suffering. Wait a second. I was reviewing this and I'm throwing this in here. So it's a sort of a last minute edit. I'm not ignoring the Messiah and his sacrifice or that it is through faith that we are saved. But true faith in God and the Messiah must lead to Torah obedience. We can't be saved by Torah alone, but Messiah's sacrifice never did away with the requirement by God to obey his instructions. Blood can provide life or death, depending upon how we choose to treat it. The Torah is our spiritual blood, which provides eternal life when we obey it, and death by ignoring it. Amen. Well, thank you for being here. Please subscribe to the website here. Well, subscribe to the website back in the website on the subscribe button in the margin and subscribe here on YouTube by clicking on these icons. And I, I ask you to please share the ministry with others. I always welcome your comments, and it's Friday, so until next time, Shabbat Shalom, and of course, Baruch Hashem.